The odds of encountering a shiny are pretty low. Odds are, you've never found one before buying an action replay in 2007. In today's video, I'm taking on Pokemon Platinum with only shiny Pokemon. This would have come out a lot sooner if not for my own stupidity. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. Ever since that day, I've been working on this, and that was forever ago. So if you enjoy, make sure to subscribe so I know you actually enjoy these types of videos. Here we are in Pokemon Platinum, by far one of my favorite games. My last save, which is gone but not forgotten, I hunted for a Chimchar, so this time around, I'm gonna go for something a little bit different. Having a fire type in Generation 4 definitely would be beneficial, but the thumbnail has to be a little bit different from last time. This time, I decided to go for Piplup. It's already adorable, and its shiny sprite makes it look even even cooler. Very slightly, at least. Resetting for this thing was not fun at all. I used to complain about having to do around 8,000, maybe just over 10,000 resets, but this time it was a lot worse. The odds for finding a shiny in this game is 1 in 8,192. Can you take a guess on how many resets it took for me to get a shiny Piplop? 21,000 resets later, I finally get my shiny Piplop. What's the difference between this Piplop and the other 21,000? Well, if you look very closely, this one's slightly discolored. And after a surprisingly close battle, Piplup is able to take down the Turtwig and we're actually able to progress in the game. I make it back to Rowan's lab and now it's time to give Piplup a nickname and I give the appropriate nickname Waffles. Since I chose Piplup and it learns Bubble in only a few levels, I know that once we actually get to the first gym it's going to be pretty easy, but getting to the first gym might be more difficult than the actual gym itself. After doing a few annoying tasks, it's already time for our second rival battle. Our rival leads off with a Starly at level 7 and we have a 2 level advantage, so I thought this would be pretty easy, but I wasn't so sure about his Turtwig. Starlight ends up going down without any trouble at all, and last out is the Turtwig, and I honestly did not think I was going to win this battle, but luck was on our side, and we end up somehow using a combination of Pounds and Bubble to take it out. I'll be honest with you, I did not expect that at all. I then go find Lance in the Warburg Mine, that way he will go back to the gym and we could actually face him. This battle goes pretty much how you'd expect, or did it? Warburg is a Rock-type gym leader, and we do have a Water-type with a Water-type move, so this shouldn't be too bad. Work leads off with a Geodude at level 12, so I decided to go for a Bubble for an easy one-shot. Next out is Onyx, and honestly, this thing was actually pretty fast. Onyx ends up outspeeding me and goes for a Rock Throw, not doing too much damage at all, as Bubble is almost enough for a one-shot. Work then heals it up with a Potion, and one more Bubble is enough to take it down. Last out is Craniodos at level 14, and this thing outspeeds me and goes for a Headbutt, doing a ton of damage, as Bubble doesn't even do half. But somehow, I'm able to survive one more Headbutt and get a high roll to take down the Craniodos. And with that, we take down Rourke and get the very first gym badge, the Cole badge. Thanks, Santa. Trust me, I'm not proud of these jokes either. Now, it's time to make my way to Eterna City to take on the second gym leader, but before I could even consider taking her on, I need to get another team member. But we have to do a few things first. On the way back to Juve Life City, Waffles gets to level 16 where she evolves into Primplop. The shiny sprite is just a little bit cooler, and the stats are a lot better. I soon realized in order to progress, I need a Pokemon that knows Rock Smash, and I did not want a shiny hunt for another few weeks just to get a Pokemon that doesn't even have the capability of learning Rock Smash, so I just ended up teaching it the Waffles. This is an awful move to waste a move slot on, but it had to be done. I soon arrive in Florinum... Flo Town. I defeat a couple galactic grunts, and now it's time to head to Valley Windworks, where I unlock the door with a key, and now it's time to face Mars. Mars leads off with a Zubat at level 15, and I end up going for a Bubble Beam here for an easy one-hit KO, and next that was Poor Ugly, and this thing is stupid strong, but luckily I get a crit, and the battle is over relatively quickly. Next, I have to help Cheryl through the Eterna Forest, and I was gonna shiny hunt here, but last time I tried to do this with Cheryl, things didn't work out so good. Do you guess you'll fall? Oh my! Oh my gosh, dude! Already? No way! Like this. I should have kept Mukuyu alive because Drifloom has something super effective against. Please don't do this. Please don't do this. Please don't do this. Drifloom, please don't do this. Please don't do this, Drifloom. Oh no. No, 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 no! 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 No, Drifloom! <laughs> yeah, we're not doing that again. Finally, I make it to Eterna City, where we could finally look for our very next team member. I head east of Eterna to Route 211, where I have a chance to get some pretty good stuff. We have stuff like Meditai, Zubat, and Bronzor, just to name a few. Trying to find wild shiny encounters are the absolute worst. Sure, it's faster than looking for a shiny starter, but the chances you get something you really don't want are pretty high. But after around 25,000 encounters, I actually got something 
something that was really good. I would never normally be able to sit here and make these kind of videos for you guys if it wasn't for today's sponsor. If you've ever used American sites to buy anything from Japan, you've probably noticed a huge price spike. This is where Buy can come in and save you a lot of money. Buy is a service that places orders or bids on your behalf on Japanese shopping and auction sites and ships them straight to you without any insane price increases. This includes sites like Rakuten, Amazon Japan, and Yahoo Japan Auction. Buy is easy to use and has support for multiple languages and ships worldwide. Buy buys the products from Japanese stores, the item is shipped to Buy's warehouse, and then from there it is prepared for international shipping and sent directly to you. They also have a variety of shipping and insurance methods to fit your needs no matter what you purchase. So if you're holding back on getting that vintage Pokemon game from Japan, wait no longer, because with my link in the description below, you get 2,000 yen, about $15 off your first time purchase from Baiyi. Again, go click on the link below to get the coolest things you've always wanted from Japan using my link. Get 2,000 yen off and thank you Baiyi for sponsoring this video. The shiny I ended up getting was a Bronzor. Now, Bronzor is actually a really good encounter here. It actually won't help with the second gym, but overall, it should be helpful throughout the entire run. And now that I think about it, Bronzor actually will be helpful in the second gym because the alternative is a water type. And after all this time, I was finally able to add Bronzor to my team. I did end up doing some damage to Bronzor, but I made sure that a critical hit would not KO it because if it did, you wouldn't be seeing this video right now. And I end up giving Bronzor the nickname Zong. Now we could finally take on Gardenia. After grinding a few levels, of course. Gardenia leads off with a Turtwig at level 20, and at this point, Zong is at level 22. Now this battle took a lot of attempts, basically just because I did not want to overlevel because that absolutely ruins the fun of the game. Bronzor has Hypnosis and Confuse Ray, which definitely does increase the odds of us actually being able to win this battle. On this attempt, I was able to use Hypnosis and Extra Sensory to take down the Turtwig, only taking a little bit of damage. Next up is Cherim at level 20, so I go ahead and switch out on the Waffles here as I get hit with a Grass Knot, doing a decent amount of damage, but actually, surprisingly enough, Waffles is able to take down the Cherim, leaving her to her last Pokemon, Roserade. I end up going for Peck with Waffles just to get some damage down on the Roserade before it ends up going down, and I send out Zong once again. Zong ends up getting hit with a grass knot here not doing too much damage as i'm able to connect with a confuse ray and then a hypnosis greatly increasing the chances of us actually winning i then end up spamming extra sensory and luckily rosard ends up going down even though it ends up getting killed up with a super potion i think it's absolutely crazy i had to look for a new team member for literal weeks and then i had to spend another hour trying to get past the next gym leader finally gardenia is taken care of and we're able to continue once again the only bad thing is we need a pokemon that can learn cut and the only pokemon I have that can learn cut is of course my starter. Unfortunately, that means I have to waste another move slot on a really bad move, but it is what it is, I guess. But now that Waffles has cut, I'm able to make it into the Galactic Building and make my way to the top. Once I'm there, I have to find Jupiter, who leads off with a Zuba at level 21. After taking only a little bit of damage from Bite, I'm easily able to KO the Zuba, and now I have to deal with the Stuntank at level 23. Skuntank ends up going for a Screecher, harshly lowering my defense, but I do manage to get a confuse right off and eventually hit a hypnosis which puts it to sleep. It only took about 17 hypnosises to actually hit so I'd say we're doing pretty good. Once Guntank is asleep I end up switching out into waffles to hit this thing with a bubble beam which actually does a lot of damage. Guntank ends up eating its berry but it doesn't matter as I'm able to go for a couple more bubble beams to eventually finish it off. If you guys are enjoying the video so far make sure to join the discord. The link is in the description below. I will be in the voice chat channel almost every single day for about a week after this video releases. I then go try to get the bike from the bike guy, but then Cynthia interrupts me and gives me an egg, which may or may not contain a shiny Pokemon. I then grab the bike from the bike guy, and I'm off. I head south, try to go into a cave, Dawn gives us the Versus Seeker, and shortly after arrive in Heart Home City. Heart Home City is home of the third gym, which uses Ghost-type Pokemon, so I'm pretty sure Zong should be enough for this gym. I talk to Fantina in the contest hall to make her go back to her gym, and I just now realize there's actually a lot of gym leaders in this game that aren't in their gym initially, and you have the make them go back to their gym, which is a little interesting. Cynthia's egg ends up hatching, and of course it's not a shiny, and now it's time to face Fantina. I ended up leading off with Waffles here to do as much damage to her Pokemon as possible before switching out into Zong. First that is the Skull, so I end up going for a Bubble Beam a couple of times to take it out, and next out is Miss Magius at level 26, which actually ends up going down to Waffles. I only have 5 HP left at this point, so I just let Haunter take down Waffles as I send out Zong and go for a Confuse Ray. I get it with the Shadow Claw and then go for Extra Sensory, doing a ton of damage to Haunter, 
Exorcister, but unfortunately it ends up getting healed up, but his HP goes right back down as I use another Exorcentry, I end up hitting myself in confusion, and then one turn later, it ends up going down. On this attempt, Waffles was able to do a lot more than previous attempts, so it made this battle look easy, but trust me, it was not fun to deal with. Almost immediately after, we are put into another battle with our rival. This battle ended up being extremely easy, and there's not much to talk about here besides he actually ended up switching out his Staravia, which I've never seen before. Next up is one of my least favorite routes of all time, but luckily for you guys, you don't have to watch it because of the power of editing, but I definitely had to suffer through it. I end up biking my way into the next city, and there's actually nothing to do here, so we're just gonna go to the next one. And I make it to Veilstone City, but not after almost whiting out literally three or four times. The trainers on that, especially with only two Pokemon, are no joke. In Veilstone, there is the fourth gym leader, but before we could take her on, we have to catch another team member. And I'll be honest, there are not a lot of great options here. In the end, I end up going south to Valor Lakefront to look for my next team member. The only really good thing here is a Houndour, but like I said, there's there's not many great options besides that. The only thing I know is I really do not want a giraffe rig. I was on this route almost every single day for two weeks at 3am. Kinda sounds like the beginning of a really bad creepypasta. I don't know how many recesses this took exactly, but if I had to guess, it was around 17 to 18,000 before I found my next team member, which is the best Pokemon of all time. Some would even argue more powerful than Arceus. Yeah, it's Babero. The only really good thing that comes out of this is that I'm going to be able to get rid of the HM moves on Waffle and put them on Babero. Babero is a great HM Pokemon, but combat wise, I don't think he's going to be that much help. And after doing a little bit of damage and a couple of Ultra Balls, I end up catching Babero and I give him the nickname Cheese. It's also fantastic that I caught a normal type right before the Fighting type gym. But now we could go face Maylene. In Maylene's gym, Zong ends up getting to level 33 where he evolves into Bronzong. Bronzong is a very good defensive tank and can be super annoying annoying with his moveset. Also, Bronzong's shiny sprite looks absolutely amazing, and on top of that, he's gonna be great for Maylene. Alright, Maylene time. Maylene leads off with a Meditite at level 28, and I was honestly too lazy to go back to the Pokemon Center, so Zong isn't even at full HP. I get hit with a Fake Out and then a Drain Punch, but Extra Sensory almost is enough for a one-shot, and one more is enough to finish it off. She then instantly goes into her Ace Lucario at level 32, which does a lot of damage with Force Palm, but I am able to get a lot of damage off using a combination of Confuse Ray and Extra Sensory before Zong ends up going down. I end up going out into Waffles next as Lucario goes for a Drain Punch, I go for a Rock Smash just because I'm stupid and it makes him be able to live it just with a sliver of HP, but the next turn he ends up going down. Last out is Machoke at level 29 and I end up going for Brine, doing more damage than I expected. Unfortunately, Karate Chop does take down Waffles and I'm left with my last Mon, my last new Mon, Cheese, and somehow he ends up outspeeding and takes it out with a headbutt. I just think it's funny all the bad stuff I was saying about about cheese and then he just clutches up and wins us the fourth gym badge like that. I apologize cheese, it will not happen again. Next up is Pastoria City, home of the fifth gym leader Wake. But once again already, I have to catch another team member before taking on Wake. I head east of Pastoria to Route 213 where I could get a couple of things that I want. I can either get a Shellos, a Wingle, or a Chatot. And Chatot's shiny sprite by far is the coolest one out of all of these. If I get a Wingle or Chatot, I could teach it fly and that would end up saving me a lot of time or I could end up catching a Shellos which is just going to be another solid team member once it evolves. And if I end up catching a Buizel once it evolves into Floatzel, it's not fantastic, but it's still pretty solid. But what I ended up catching was actually better than expected. I spent about a month of my life in this grass going back and forth looking for my next team member, and it finally pays off. I ended up getting a Shellos, which is ideally what I wanted, but what makes this even better is its ability. After putting it to sleep, I was able to catch this thing only after a couple of Pokeballs, and I end up giving it the nickname Potato. What makes Potate so special is the fact that it knows Storm Drain, which is absolutely the best ability that Shellos could have. But now that we have another member, we can continue. As I make my way to the next gym, we're stopped by our rival who wants to fight, and I completely forgot this fight existed, so it caught me completely off guard. Our rival leads off with a Star Ravia at level 34, and I lead off with Potate at level 25, who is vastly outleveled. Even though Potate is outleveled, he actually ends up doing a lot of damage to Star Ravia and eventually makes him switch out into Grodel, who absolutely destroys him with a Grass type move. I switch out the Zong and then go for extra sensory a few times to take down the Grodel, and next out is the Ponita at level 32. I don't want to get with something crazy, so I just end up switching out the Waffles here and go for a Brine, almost getting a one-shot, and then I flinch three times in a row with Stomp, but eventually I am able to take him down. Taravia then comes out and takes down Waffles, so I send out Zong once again and go for an extra sensory taking down the Staravia, and last out is the Buizel, who gets one-shot by Zong. It definitely looks like I have the 
to grind up Babarel and Shellos very soon because they are vastly outleveled by almost everything. But now it's time for Wake. On the last trainer we have the face before Wake, Waffles gets to level 36 where he evolves into Empoleon. I've never seen a shiny Empoleon before this, so to see the shiny sprite was absolutely crazy to me. I think it looks really cool. And I can't even learn Aqua Jet, which is a really solid move because of these stupid HM moves that I have, and I cannot wait to get rid of them. As per usual, I make it to the gym leader, and of course I'm too lazy to go heal, so we're taking this on with only three Pokemon. Wake leads off with Gyarados at level 33, so I instantly put it to sleep with Hypnosis, and then I go for a few extra sensories to take it down. Next out is the Floatzel at level 37, and I try to go for another Hypnosis here, but I instantly get taken out, so I switch out into Waffles. The only decent move I have on Waffles is Brine, and even though it's resisted against Floatzel, I still manage to take it out. Next out is Quagsire, and I couldn't remember if this thing had Earthquake or not, so I just decided to switch out into Potato to scout what move he was going to use, which was just Mudshot, so it's a little bit better than Earthquake at least. I end up going for Hidden Power, which doesn't do too much damage to the Quagsire, and eventually Pote ends up going down, so I send out Waffles yet again and go for Brine, taking down Quagsire in only a couple of turns. And just like that, I end up getting the 5th Gym Badge from Wake on my very first attempt. And of course, that means it's time to look for another team member after we do a few more chores, which consists of chasing down this guy who commits an act of, how do I say this without getting demonetized, uh, Tom Fullery. We chase him down and he ends up just walking away anyway, so the point of me actually chasing this guy down and beating him in a battle is a mystery to me. Then everybody's favorite champion appears and gives me some Advil to give us some Psydux. I give the medicine to the Psydux and they scurry off all cute-like and Cynthia appears once again, asking me to give an old charm to her grandma, which is in Selectic Town. Anything for you, Cynthia. Anything for you. Our shiny hunting adventures are going to have to take a pause because this is the end of the first video. Part 2 will come out very soon, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. Thanks for watching, guys. See you soon.